Let's start off by talking about art. Okay. Do you like art? Growing up, uh, a way to express myself and uh, just generally showing my emotions through whatever medium that I, cho I choose. Um, I actually prefer art more than music in some uh, different ways. I like to paint and I like to, I like to see people, how they express themselves as well uh, through their art. Um, so yeah, I do love art. Do you think that art classes are important in school? I actually feel like art is very subjective. Um, teaching basic theories about art and stuff like that, I feel like, yes, it is sometimes necessary so people can understand, let's say, basic concepts such as color theory and whatnot. However, I don't feel like um, following a certain um, concept or how to draw this or how to draw that um, is quite necessary. Like, I feel like your own creative mind can go in whatever direction you want it to go to. Who are your favorite artists? So my favorite artist in terms of uh, the music industry, I would say Rihanna. I love her music. I love, like every time I put it on um, uh, my car and I'm driving, I just love listening to her music because it, it literally changes my mood. Um, and I love listening. I love sharing that experience with my friends as well. So it, she's <laughs> tops uh, my favorite artists. Now let's talk about animals. Do you have a pet at home? I actually have two pets. Um, they're both cats. I love animals, but specifically cats. I love um, everything about them. So I have two cats. One, her name is Nuni. The other is Tuti. <laughs> um, and Nuni kind of describes me as a person. Like we kind of share the same... Um, behaviors so she's very uh lazy sometimes she's also um introverted i would say i really love cats i love how fluffy and sometimes friendly they are i also enjoy their company just them being there would you like a different pet in the future so i used to have ducks um two ducks and I, unfortunately, I had to give them up to um, shelter because I felt like I couldn't um, properly take care of them in my house. So in the future, I really hope that I could um, revisit that memory of them, of taking care, care of my ducks. So hopefully in the near future, maybe if I'm fully settled in my own house, I would love to have two more ducks. <laughs> And do you prefer cats or dogs? Definitely cats. <laughs> like, I think it's because I'm, uh, I come from like a Muslim family. So we kind of have like a taboo or like an idea of dogs. Like not, it's not clean. It's not, you know. Um, so cats are just the way to go. Like I love cats, <laughs> their personality, the way they look, the way they act, everything about them. Now let's talk about reading. How often do you read books? Back in middle school, I used to be so into books. It was basically my personality trait. I really, really enjoyed, like I had my alone time is just spending um, my time reading books. And at one point, my family just told me like, get out of the house, like, what are you doing? <laughs> and even if I did go out of the house, like I would just carry my book everywhere I go. As of recently, I kind of fell off of that habit of reading constantly because just with everything happening in my life, I can't keep up. But um, I would say once every two months, I, I would read books. <laughs> what book would you recommend to a friend? So I would recommend All the Bright Places. I forgot the name of the author. But I think that book really depicts what a teenager would go through. Like I said, I used to read back in middle school and also in high school. So I felt like that book really spoke to me. I really related to that book. And I would recommend it to a friend because I generally feel like 
it kind of relates to, you know, the adolescents or teenagers in general. Do you prefer to read ebooks or paper books? I generally prefer uh, physical hard or hard copies because I like the feel of the book being in my hand, um, especially because I use my phone daily for a lot of things. I would like to change up my routine every once in a while. So a hard copy would feel like it's a different vibe um, to my daily routine. Now let's talk about photography. Who do you normally take photos of? Whenever I go out or step out of, outside the house, I love taking pictures of whether it's of my friends, my family members, or cats. <laughs> I actually enjoy looking at things from a different perspective. So let's say just like the book on the table or the light or even just a bird from afar, I like taking pictures to show people like through my eyes what I see or how I view the world. Do you ever put any of your photos in frames? I've actually never thought about that. I've never done that before. It's actually interesting because I've seen a lot of people do that online where they print out their Polaroid pictures or like a physical copy of pictures that they've taken before and they framed it. And actually, I think I've seen my friends do that before. So, I mean, why not? Maybe <laughs> once I move out. <laughs> when you are on holiday, do you prefer to send postcards or do you prefer to take photos and send them to people? I've never done the postcards thing before. I feel like it's kind of outdated, but I wouldn't mind doing that or start doing that in my vacations. But I usually just take photos and send it on WhatsApp. Let's say my family group, I send it just to show them like what I've been up to in my vacation. So yeah, just photos. I would like to talk about uh, the author or the writer that I would like to meet uh, in the future. Um, unfortunately, she passed away, but um, the writer is Jane Austen. She is the writer of Pride and Prejudice, uh, which is the current read that I'm uh, reading right now. The reason why I would like to meet her is because of how um, during her time, which is around 1700s um, or 1800s, I was always interested in like the Victorian or like um, how they were in the past, um, the way they dress, the way they talk, uh, especially because um, people in the past spoke differently, like the language or the um, words that they used were very different. Right now, I'm reading one of her books, Pride and Prejudice, and sometimes I have to um, Google what she's saying. Like, I don't understand what she wrote. It's very interesting the way she writes or like the language that she uses describing her, like the setting, the story setting. I really enjoy it. And um, I would like to find out about her lifestyle specifically because Again, I'm just very interested or intrigued about the idea of like living in uh, that era of where um, the time that she was still alive. Why I would like to meet her is because I'm, again, very interested in how she speaks or how she uh, spoke um, and the language or uh, language that she uses. Okay. Well done. That's <laughs> the end of the two minutes. So we've been talking about a writer that you would like to meet, and we're going to continue to talk about reading in section three. What kind of books are most popular with children in your country? To thank you for watching this video, I want to give you a free course that has helped thousands of students improve their IELTS speaking score. What it's going to do is take you through every single part of the test and give you strategies for part one, part two, and part three, and also allow you to practice at home for free and get feedback. To sign up for that for free, all you have to do is just click the link in the description. Thanks very much, and let's get back to the video. In my country, to be honest, I'm unaware of. I don't know that much, but when I was a kid, I used to like 
Dr. Seuss. Even now, sometimes if I see Dr. Seuss online, I would I would just skim through it because I like how um, it rhymes. It was just fun to read, to be honest. Why do you think that some children don't read very often? So I I'm a firm believer in in terms of how parents um, reinforce their children. So when it comes to like I've seen, I've personally seen how parents act uh, with their children, um, giving them iPads or <laughs> like just letting them watch TV. So I believe that if parents uh, enforce their children to read more books or encourage them to start reading together, that would be a fun exercise to do at home. Other than that, I feel like the parents are usually the biggest reinforcers. Now let's talk about reading for different purposes. Do you think that speed reading is a useful skill to have? I do think that it is a useful skill. So for me, I I read really slow. Like sometimes I have to reread um, a paragraph because it, I couldn't just decipher what it was saying. So I feel like in terms of... Um, like high demand jobs where they need to get a lot of things done on time. So speed reading could be a useful skill. Some people believe that reading novels is more interesting or more enjoyable than reading nonfiction. Why do you think that is? So I feel like reading just generally could give you a time out from everything. I would understand why people would prefer fiction over nonfiction because just in your daily life, you're experiencing a lot of, you know, draining um, energies around you. So when it comes to your alone reading time, you get to experience or I guess be creative in your imagination. So, yeah, that's why I think um, fiction books are more popular. Recently, many bookshops have had to close because of competition from <laughs> online bookstores. Do you think that's a good thing or a bad thing? I think that it's a bad thing because I personally love um, when I physically go to the store and look through the books and just read. Or Because I feel like buying a book should feel like an experience rather than like a chore. Um, so buying it online dim diminishes that experience uh, overall. So yeah, I feel like it is a bad thing um, that the physical stores are closing and online stores are overtaking. Let's start off by talking about your daily routine. Tell me about your daily routine. Okay, well, I wake up around 8 a.m. Uh, every morning it's like clockwork. And I brush my teeth, I wash my face, breakfast, um, and then I get in my car and I drive to work. And uh, yeah, that's basically it. I come back home and uh, fix myself up some dinner and watch some Netflix. Very average, mundane. How has your daily routine changed since mm -hmm. you were a child? Not much, except I go to work now instead of school. Um, but, uh, I get a lot of free time over the weekends, so I get to do the things I like to do, such as meditation and writing. I love journaling. I'd love to put out some novels one day. Um, I always thought that I would retire to the countryside in my old age with my animals and write books. So yeah, so writing, um, yoga, what else do I do on the weekends? Oh, I want to try horse riding as well. Is your daily routine different at the weekend compared to during the week? Yes, 100%. So uh, the weekdays are for work, mainly being productive, paying the bills, and the weekends I get to do whatever I want to do. So I really treasure and enjoy my weekends. Let's talk now about dreams. Mm -hmm. Do you dream much at night? I do dream sometimes, but not very often. And when I do dream, I don't tend to remember my dreams. Do you think we can learn anything from dreams? I think so. I think there's lots of repressed emotions and stress that come out um, during our dreams. 
uh, that perhaps we haven't addressed in real life. So yes, I, I believe we can learn quite a lot. And I suppose some people can even, you know, predict the future through dreams or images that they see. I'm kind of on the fence about that. I don't know, but seems credible. Now let's talk about email. What kind of emails do you receive about your work? I receive a lot of emails from my higher ups. So my manager, people from other departments as well, usually following up for things um, or scheduling meetings, um, just a lot of work that needs to be done and reminders to please do this work. So do you normally reply to emails as soon as you receive them? Oh, no. Um, I don't because I feel like there's no point in replying if the work hasn't been done. So let's say we're supposed to schedule a meeting and something needs to be done. I'd much prefer to get that thing done and then respond by saying, okay, here it is. Here's the file that you, um, that you requested or that you asked for. And, um, yeah, instead of, you know, a random sort of hello, well received. Thank you. Are you happy to receive emails that are advertising things? No, I don't think anyone would be. Unless it's for a brand that I follow or that I like, unless they're having a sale. Um, in that case, I'd be more than happy to receive their emails. Now let's talk about exercise. How often do you exercise? Not as often as I would like. I find the gym to be quite tedious and boring. I prefer doing classes, but then to get myself to the class and sit through traffic, coming back. So I would love to work out a bit more frequently. And I, I tend to like slower exercises such as yoga or swimming, something where I don't really have to break a sweat, which is not very um, realistic, but yeah. What do you think is the best exercise to keep fit? Mm, I've tried Pilates. I think it's really good for toning the the body and the muscles and you see a big difference it might not burn as many calories but you do see a huge difference in your uh, silhouette so have the types of exercise people like to do changed since you were a child i would say not really the types of exercises that people do i would say they just don't exercise as much perhaps it's gone from cycling and tennis to dancing on tiktok I think that would be the main difference, if I'm really honest. Describe a time when you enjoyed visiting a family member or friends. I went back to Taiwan uh, last month and I stayed for about three weeks. I was visiting friends and family, um, but uh, I don't really have much family in Taiwan, just my mum. So I've noticed that, you know, in life, when you don't have a lot of family, the universe brings you friends. And it might sound a bit cliche, but friends really are the family that, you know, you've chosen. And so I've now moved away from Taiwan. But when I was there, made a lot of very, very good, I think, lifelong friends who I go back and visit periodically. I visited Shirley. I've been friends with her since I was 15. So that's about 15 years now. So you can guess my age. Um, Tiffany, I've known her since I was 18. Um, Cyril, Eva, so I visited these friends in particular. We just pretty much, not to sound boring, we just hung out and talked a lot, caught up a lot on life, what's been happening, who are you dating, you know, are you happy? So there was a lot of that over wine or tea. And um, I also went and visited Cyril's new uh, restaurant. And he's been doing really, really well for himself. I'm very happy about that. We went and visited um, Jackie and um, found out that he was actually also back in Taiwan for his wedding. So we went to his wedding, had a bit too much whiskey, but that's okay. We won't repeat that experience. Um, it was fun in, in general. It was, it was a lot of fun. Um, it was lovely to see Tiffany and Eva because they both had babies during the past one or two years and it was lovely to see them yeah so we've been talking about people that you visited and we're going to continue to talk about family when do families celebrate together in your country 
to thank you for making it this far in the video, I want to give you 10% off our VIP course. The IELTS VIP course is the most successful IELTS course in the world. That is a fact because we have more band seven, eight, and nine success stories than any other IELTS course in the entire world. We do that by simplifying the whole IELTS process, supporting you with some of the best IELTS teachers in the world, and being with you every step of the way until you get the score that you need. All you have to do is just look down in the description, just click that, and you can sign up. If you have any questions about the VIP course, always feel free to get in touch with us. We answer 100% of the questions that we get. Hope that you have become a VIP. If not, enjoy the rest of this free video. Chinese New Year, that's a big one. Uh, the Mid-Autumn Festival, that's also a big one. Any celebration really is an excuse for the family to get together, which can be a bit stressful at times because we all know how we feel about our families. We love them, but it's sort of a love-hate relationship because they can get on our nerves sometimes, but oh well. <laughs> Why is it that some people might not enjoy attending family gatherings? I think because, you know, relatives especially get it in their heads that they're family, and so they think they can ask any questions. You know, when are you going to get married? That's a big one. When are you going to have a baby? Why are you wasting your time? So that, that can be a bit stressful because the whole point of, you know, being on vacation, because now to see my family, I have to go on vacation and go back to my country to see them, is to relax, uh, not to get stressed out. So I think a lot of people have the same experience. Now let's talk about everyday life in families. Do you think it is a good thing for parents to help their children with their homework? Yes, I think it's a very good thing. I think it's important to have your mum or your dad present in your childhood. It's very good for mental health, so you don't need to see a therapist when you grow up. How important do you think it is for families to eat dinner together? Oh, very, very, very important. It's important to feel that connection because you could be people living in the same house. If you don't communicate regularly, interact regularly, What's the point of having a family? What's the point of having, you know, your parents around then if they're not going to be parents? Do you believe that everyone in a family should share chores? Yes, I think so. I think uh, that's very important. However, let's say if dad is out working most of the week, then maybe he doesn't need to do as many chores. I know it might sound a bit sexist, but it's really about... Um, um, what's the word? Distributing work evenly. We're going to start off by talking about art mm -hmm. and photography. Do you like art? Hmm, that's interesting. Um, depends on what. I like cinema, for instance, movies, music, but I don't know too much about um, paintings or modern art. I'm not too familiar with, so it depends on what kind of art. Do you like to take photographs? Yes. I wouldn't say the photographs are good, but I do enjoy taking pictures. Yeah. Do you prefer to take photos of yourself or other things? Of other things. It's kind of hard to take pictures of yourself unless it's a selfie and that's limited. So pictures of other things, mostly. Now let's talk about animals. Mm -hmm. Do you like animals? I love animals. Uh, land animals, friendly, so to speak, animals, not insects and not anything from the ocean. What is your favorite animal? Um, probably a dog. Dogs, for obvious reasons, you can keep them as pets. In terms of like non-domesticated animals, probably jaguars. Do you have any animals in your home as pets? Yes, I have two dogs. They're both from the shelter, the animal shelter, the rescues. Um, yeah, I've always had pets. Our family really likes keeping animals around. Now let's talk about bags. What type of bags do you like? I prefer purses that are a little bit on the larger side, just because I like to put everything of my life in my purse. Um, so it ends up weighing maybe 20 kilos. But yeah, larger bags, probably structured larger bags. 
How often do you carry a bag when you go out? Every day. I think that's the case for most women. I think they carry a bag every, even if you go down to the grocery or the supermarket, you take your bag with you usually, right? What sort of bags do women like to buy? It depends. Um, it depends on your outfit. It depends on where you're going. Um, for the day, if you're going to the office, you probably want something bigger that can fit your laptop, your phone, paperwork, um, everything that you might need during the day. Um, if it's nighttime, you'd want something smaller, like a clutch, something more sleek, elegant. Um, so it depends. If you're traveling, you'd want a much bigger bag that's able to fit mm -hmm. Not just you, but all of your family's stuff as well. So everything. Women like all kinds of bags. That's why we have so many of them. Now let's talk about birthdays. Mm -hmm. What did you usually do on your birthday when you were a child? So when I was a kid, when I was a child, um, in school, we had a uniform. Everybody wore a uniform to school. So when it was your birthday, it was the one day of the year that you were allowed to wear whatever you wanted. So it was a big deal. I mean, at least I would pick out my outfit like two months in advance. It would be like a little dress, like a princessy frock, matching shoes, matching accessories for your hair. And then you would take some kind of chocolate or candy to school. And then you could take like a period off and go and give the candy out to other teachers and other kids in the school. And we looked forward to it every year. It was the highlight to get to not have to wear the uniform, to wear whatever you wanted, and to basically be able to skip class and go out and hand out chocolates because it's your birthday. How do you normally celebrate your birthday now? Mm, very differently. Everyone's allowed to wear whatever they want now, so it's kind of not, <laughs> doesn't have the same charm. Um, it depends. I like to do a little dinner with um, my friends, something low-key. I'm not a very big party person so dinner is usually good um followed by probably like a games night or a movies movie night at home or at the cinema something low-key do you think it's important to give someone a card on their birthday like a handwritten like a birthday card um i think so yes because i'm quite sentimental and emotional so i prefer more um, emotional, sentimental gifts. So I think if someone takes the time to write something by hand for you, I think that, I mean, I hold on to stuff like that. So I think it's a very nice, thoughtful present to give someone on their birthday. The first time I met a new friend, so I'm going to go way back. It was my first day of school, kindergarten. And I met a girl named Amanpreet Kaur. Um, she, we were about, I think we just turned four years old. Uh, we met obviously in kindergarten, um, first day of school. Uh, what I liked about her when I first saw her, I mean, we were sitting together where the teacher made us sit next to each other. And um, she had this long hair and it was like sectioned into two parts and it was just braided all the way down. And she had the cutest face I've ever seen. She had this little fluffy marshmallow-like face. I guess that's all it takes when you're a kid to want to be friends with somebody. Um, and then I tried to... So there's like this little thing that kids do where they put their thumb out to show other kids that I want to be your friend. Um, and then if you don't want to be friends with them, you do this. It's like a it's silly little thing. So I did this to her. I put my thumb out to say, hey, do you want to be friends? And she was like this. And I was heartbroken. I was like, how can she not <laughs> want to be my friend? Um, and then I saw her again the next day. Um, and the, day, the next day after that and the day after that. And then eventually we ended up becoming best friends. She, she did it back to me, obviously, at some point. She was my first best friend that I ever had in life. She was from Punjab, which is a part of India. Um, and her mom used to make the most amazing, it's called paratha. It's like this stuffed bread 
it's like they put a uh, potato and spices into like um, into a flatbread. And my mom used to make something called sira, which is sweet semolina situation. That's the end of the two minutes. Okay. We've been talking about a friend that you met. And we're mm-hmm. going to now talk about friends at school. How important is it for children to have lots of friends at school? It depends, I would say. I would perhaps think that quality is more important than quantity. So I wouldn't say that the objective should be to make as many friends as you can or to be popular um, as much as the objective should be to build meaningful friendships with people. That could be one person, that could be five people, that could be 10 people, situational, I would say. Yeah, so it's not so much how many friends you have as um, it's, it's not as important to have a lot of friends as it might be to have people that you can trust, that you can kind of take with you in life for a longer term. Do you think it is wrong for parents to choose which friends their children have? Mm. Again, that's a tricky one. Now, when I answer these questions, I'm thinking back to real life situations. And in some cases, I have seen parents interfering and trying to make those decisions for their children where they were right to do so because the child was in bad company and they were too naive or too, um, I mean, I guess they were just too naive to see that that situation was not right for them. But the parent obviously was able to identify that my child's in bad company. So in those cases, I would say that your parents are able to read a dangerous situation better. But there's also the flip side where everybody kind of does make bad decisions. Your parents made bad decisions, you made bad decisions. And the way that you learn from them is to have a negative experience and then find your way out of it. Um, So I would say that I can see certain situations, whether it's bad relationships, bad friendships um, when you're younger, not relationships when you're younger, friendships when you're younger, sometimes it's necessary to have that experience so that you know firsthand how to deal with that situation. And you may not be able to get that experience if your parents always shield you from every single thing that can go wrong. So I can kind of see, depends on the situation, I would say. Now let's talk about making new friends. Can you think of any disadvantages of making new friends online? Disadvantages of making new friends online? I think the I think there's more disadvantages to making <laughs> new friends. I mean, there was a show recently that came out on Netflix called Tinder Swindler. The thing is with uh, most of what we see online isn't real, whether it's social media or um even news for that matter, uh, everything is kind of edit- edited and monitored to present a certain kind of image. So if you meet somebody online and you know nothing about them, they can really present any version of reality or a completely um, curated, sometimes dishonest form of their reality to you So it's a very dangerous uh, game to play. Friendships or relationships? Both. Friendships. Friendships. Yeah. It's somebody you know nothing about is a very, everything can go wrong there, right? Would you say it is harder for people to make new friends as they get older? Yes. I think it becomes harder for people to make um, friends as they get older. I think adults are perhaps a little bit more um, mm, more structured. I mean, the older that you get, the more set you get in your ways, your routine, where you work, your family, your gym. Children, for children, it becomes, it's very easy for children to interact with other children. Like if you put two kids in a room and three seconds they're talking to each other without any restrictions, they're talking about all of their family secrets and everything, you know, they, they're they comfortable. But with adults, obviously, people tend to be more filtered when they interact with other adults. 
Um, also, I think if you've been friends from the time that you were a child with somebody, you've lived through so many life events together that that kind of bond is hard to build with someone that you meet in your mid 30s because you've just lost so much time that you're learning something. You're learning about them from scratch, where they went to school, about their family, about their relationships, about their siblings. So, yeah, I think it's a it's not impossible. You can make a lot of incredible friendships later in life, but it's probably harder to come by than if you were a kid in play school.